in a few weeks, the UFC will be coming to Uruguay for the UFC fight night, Shevchenko versus Karmouche. That's going to be interesting, an interesting fight. But to me, the most interesting fight on this card is actually going to be the promotional debut right here of Adolfo Vieira fighting against Oscar Peixota. So for a little background on Adolfo Vieira, he is arguably one of the most accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys to ever get into the MMA. He's 5-0 and right now, finished everyone who he's fought, had four fights that were finished in the first round, one fight that was finished in the third round. Just to go through his record here, so as you can see in the picture, here is his, him wearing one of those Black Belt World Champion shirts. 5-0. and Last guy he fought, Vitaly Nimchinov, was 10-1 and prior to the fight. So it's not like he's fighting nobody. He's fighting some good fighters right now. Most of those fights were out in Russia. So just a quick little look at his opponent before I get into him more so. Because there, there's a lot to go through with him, both from a jiu-jitsu standpoint and an MMA standpoint. His opponent, Oscar Pechota, uh, kind of hard to pronounce, a uh, Polish name. Uh, he's had three UFC fights, two and one. So one of his first two fights just lost to Gerald Mearshart by technical submission. Pechota himself is a black belt in Brazil Jiu-Jitsu. He's a pretty good all-around grappler. You would figure in this fight he's going to have the edge on the feet. And he's at least going to be competent on the ground. But Hidolfo is just so good that like even a, even a black belt like Oscar is going to be in trouble if this fight goes to the ground. So just to give you guys a little background on Hidolfo Vieira. I'll just go through his BJJ Heroes page, just talk about some of his accomplishments. And there's there's a ton. And it's very impressive at that. So here are the main achievements. These main achievements are all at black belt, not like along the way at color belt, but at black belt. IBJJF world champion, 2011 through 2014. So he won a world title every year. And in 2011, he won both his weight and the absolute. He won ADCC in 2015. uh, And then has won all these other tournaments down here that are big on their own, but aren't quite as big as ADCC or IBJJF worlds. Uh, Known for his top game, but he can definitely fight off his back as well, as I'll show you later. But this record here, this isn't like an official record. This is just record that's been tracked by BJJ Heroes. But even still, 96 wins and 62 of those are submissions. And against these are all these are all matches against black belts. So he's not just beating other black belts, but he's finishing other black belts at a pretty high rate uh, compared to 10 losses. The one submission loss here is a heel hook to Dean Lister and ADCC. But if you look at some of the names here of guys who he's beaten, and this kind of goes old to new, but you got Braulio Estimo here, uh, Braga Neto. Leo Nogueira, that's Bernardo Faria, he, he beat a handful of times. Michael Lange, Tarsus Humphreys, Cabrinho, although Cabrinho is a much smaller guy. He's like a featherweight. Hoffa Mendez, same deal. Claudio Calasan, Sergio Moraes, who's in the UFC right now, had beat Bouchesha back in 2011, although Bouchesha holds a handful of victories over him as well. Bernardo Faria beat uh, Dustin Dean's chop certified, 26 to nothing. That's impressive. Rafael Lovato, 20 to 2. That's the current middleweight champion in Bellator. Again, Adolfo will be fighting at middleweight in the UFC, although he fought at like 207, I believe, in Jiu Jitsu, but he's making a bigger cut to get down to 185. Roberto Alencar, which is John Jones's Jiu Jitsu coach, so beat him with an arm in Ezekiel. I mean, just a ton of giant, gigantic names here. Andre Galval, Faria again. Faria's name just keeps popping up over and over. Jean G. Hibero, Kim Terra is kind of a smaller guy. Keenan Cornelius. Like, just the names on this list are just fantastic. Joel Gabriel Hocha, Leo Leitch, Alan Belcher, former UFC fighter, Travis Stevens, uh, who's a judo silver medalist in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Belt. Galval again, Leandro Lowe, world champion. AJ Agazarm. <laughs> a bit of a size difference there, but still. Sean Roberts, who I believe fought in the UFC a while back as well. Just a bunch of giant names. Ben Henderson, who uh, f- former UFC champion at 155, current 170 or 170 pounder for Bellator. And Muhammad Ali most recently, which I'll, I'll get into that video. Now, Muhammad Ali, the, the importance of that is that the, that match happened in 2018. And Muhammad Ali was the world champion in 2018. So even though Hodolfo hasn't won a world title since 2014... Uh, he's he sort of transitioned over to MMA, but he's still at a level right now where even now he can still go against the best guys in the world at his weight and, and come away with the victory. So what I'll sh- show right now is his last fight in ACA. There wasn't a whole lot to take away from his striking in this fight. He threw like one kick, fainted a couple of punches, but didn't really throw a punch, but was able to still get the takedown and then finish quickly from there. So it's hard to, to say a whole lot about his striking offensively because there's really nothing there to show for it. Uh, this was back in June, I believe. 
he hasn't fought um wait just real quick just so i get that fact right so let's get a quick look at uh when hidalfo javiro has been fighting but we'll, we'll get back into the video once i get this figured out here yeah so it was june 8th when he had that last fight uh, and then fought in June 2018 and had a couple fights in 2017 and one other fight in 2018. So this is a pretty recent fight. He's going to be fighting again a couple of months later. But uh, back to that video. So what we can notice from him is that he, he's getting backed up, which is kind of surprising. But he, at least he keeps his hand up. His, his head moves a little bit. He's not moving his head the most, but he's not keeping it completely straight either. So at least he's learning some defensive skills here. So pawing with that front hand, trying to get a reaction so he can shoot underneath. But again, a lot of circling backward. Bouncing on his toes, which is good. Faints a jab right there. Again, more pawing with that lead hand. But at least he's not staying still. There are a couple punches that were thrown like those right there, and he was able to get out of the way. So he's not really taking a whole lot of damage. He's not delivering any damage, obviously, but things could be going worse for him on the feet. There just kind of slaps a kick. It's hard to tell if it lands. Same there. Again, not a whole lot of offensive here, but both guys know exactly what Adolfo wants to do here. They know that he wants to shoot it and go for a takedown, and eventually he's going to be able to do that without even having to set it up all that much. Throws a jab there, but doesn't land it. And here he gets the shot and scoops the leg. And a nice little detail here. And this is sort of from the Khabib Nurmagomedov school where you use your legs to scoop up both of your opponent's legs so they can't get back up. And from here, he's just going to go to work. And it, it's just going to be a quick night for his opponent. So scoops up the legs. A common thing you see in MMA a lot, especially up against the fence, is guys will sort of give their back up and hope that the fence can be used to, to wedge a guy off them or that they can just be slick enough to get up. With a guy like Adolfo Vera, you, you don't want to give him your back at all. Um, and his opponent's going to learn that the hard way right here. So instead of turning into him and trying to play some sort of guard game, which again, that's probably not the best idea either with a guy like Adolfo Vera, he just tries to turn away and that does not work at all. So Adolfo just has one hook in here, but he's got the choke. He gets the second hook in here, and from here, fight's over. Opponent goes out. That's the end. So Adolfo Vieira, as far as his jiu-jitsu style goes, he's more of a top player. He has very good takedowns, at least good takedowns for jiu-jitsu, but he can also play off of his back. So I'm going to play this at a little bit of an accelerated speed. But this is him versus Muhammad Ali, who, again, was the 2018 world champion. So here he's going for a belt grip, looking for a butterfly sweep. So he's got the hook in here. He probably has a sleeve grip. It's hard to tell from this angle. But Muhammad Ali is also a top player and a world champion top player at that. And here's Adolfo finding a way off of his back to eventually work a sweep in. So then goes a single leg X from there. Gets a pan grip, switches to X. Gets him off his base. He's going to pop up here and let's go for more of like a basic wrestling style takedown here. So he's in on a single. He's got his ass hanging out, which kind of sucks. Let's see if I can block that. But eventually he's going to be able to finish the single here on 2018 world champion in 2018. And here he, he gets a, what's called a, well, I guess it's not quite a super hook there, but effectively he's halfway towards getting back control at this point. And obviously, like I mentioned before, he, he did end up winning this match. So for him to beat the current world champion in 2018 after him being a five-time world champion previously, it, it shows that he's still just top of the food chain level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I can't wait to see how he does against Pejota. Um, assuming he wins that fight, and I don't think that's the craziest thing to assume, uh, it'll be interesting to see how quickly he works his way up the ladder, especially with a guy like Rafael Lovato, who was able to work his way up the belt for a ladder fairly quickly and is now their champion. Now, I think Lovato has more of a striking background than Hidolfo does. Uh, and those guys have fought each other a few times. Hidolfo, like I showed before, had that 20 to 2 win against Hido uh, against uh, Lovato, but Lovato has also had a win over him, I believe, in 2011 in the ADCC finals. So I, d I don't know that you would say that he's going to be as good as Rafael Lovato, especially not right now, but 
he's only 29 right now. He's got plenty of time to keep improving, and his jujitsu is just top of the food chain. So I can't wait to see what's next from him.